Good afternoon, everyone. This is the doctor. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. The rain has finally gone, the sun is out, and I am quite happy right now. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. It would really help me out. And let's talk about Frivia's impact. Sorry, Frivia's impact on global. And let's kind of talk about whether or not you should be using her, whether you should be scared of her, what her base stats are, because we didn't have that information before when we did her previous review. And we're going to talk about where I think she fits into the niche. There's a lot of people who bash her, and personally, I don't particularly like her. I think she has a very small area where she's specialized, but I would not ever encourage someone to pull for her right now. So she is the elegant Spellblade Fryevia. Her primary job is Spellblade, secondary job Green Mage, third job White Mage. She has 5% weakness to everything except Missile and Magic, 5% resistance to Missile, 15% resistance to Magic. Her TMR, the Florid Hairpin, is going to be HP 322, Defense 5, Spirit 10, Critical 6. And this is really important. And we'll talk a little bit about why when we get into her theoretical builds. But Glacial Mastery, the ability that's on her TMR, significantly raises her own attack and magic for one turn and bestows Wind Eater. And I think for any build with Fryevia, her TMR is a essential non-negotiable. I don't believe you'll be able to make her work without her TMR. I think that's just the way she was designed. And that attack and magic boost is 70% when you have it fully leveled. So it is substantial. Her master ability coming in at HP plus 10% and magic attack resistance plus 10%. This is going to be the thing that sets Fryavia apart from other units is going to be her high HP. She has almost as high HP as global tanks and JP tanks out there. Coming in at almost 3000 HP base. That is huge. That means she's going to be modified significantly more by HP percent buffs. And honestly, compared to Ayaka, compared to any other units, her HP is crazy. And if you're like me, you've seen everyone throw the builds at you, where they've been on the War of the Visions calc website, and they're like, I can get Fryavia's HP to 5,000. She's actually super good. Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, and there are builds out there under optimal conditions where you can, of course, get her HP 5,000. I think the most important thing, though, with Fryevia is that she's going to be able to survive two hits, right? Ayaka, dead in two hits every time. Fryevia, not dead in two hits. I think that's the primary difference when you're thinking about Fryevia, right? She's able to equip heavy armor, so she's going to have high defense. She'll have spirit from her TMR. So overall, I would say, you know, she's going to survive. She gets an additional HP 97. She gets starting AP plus 6, magic plus 60, putting her at 285 with an additional magic plus 20%. So that's going to be another plus 40, putting her somewhere in the realm of about 320 magic uh, without any equipment or modified equipment or anything like that. Her limit burst, I think, is very powerful. I think it's kind of the opposite of Ayaka, and that's how I'm going to continue thinking about her, is she's... She's the opposite of Ayaka. Instead of having a big healing limit burst, she's going to have a damage dealing limit burst. Instead of doing something like staying back line, she'll be okay getting front line. So she's kind of a weird hybrid character. Call out to her limit burst does lower her AP consumption by 40. Very cool. And the multiplier is going to be magic based. So that is important to keep in mind as well because she is a spell blade and her... Modifiers for her attacks can be variable, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But first, let's look at her ability board. And I think this was one of the big mysteries when we first got her on whether or not she would be viable because her sub-job options for abilities are so bad. And anyone who has a healer can tell you all they do is spam protect if you sub white mage. Well, this shouldn't be a problem with Fryavia. As long as you plan in advance. And yes, we're going to be getting the ability uh, blocker here in the future. But if you look, you have Shell up here. Protect, Raise, and Deprotect all up here. You can actually just elect not to get those on the ability board. You cannot get Shell. You cannot get D-Shell. Although I think you'll probably want to get D-Shell because it does give 15 mag if you do grab it. 
I don't think that means she's going to start spamming D shell. Maybe just leave it at level one. Vitalize, which is the terrible green mage ability that increases agility that sub green mages will always spam. You can elect not to get that. Bar Blizzard, you are kind of trapped in getting no matter what. Leave that one at level one, but you can opt not to get Silence Blade. You can opt not to get Bar Blizzard. So in terms of her ability positioning, she actually has really good ability positioning if you decide to not get that to mess with the AI. And if you just wanted to be a white mage with Cure, Curaga, Curata, Cura, and Full Life. That's crazy to me. Bar Blizzard, Bar Blizzard you will have to get, so I would just avoid the green mage sub job. Other than that, I actually think her ability board layout is incredibly intelligent, and I think it's one of those things that we don't often look at. We talk about not leveling abilities so that the AI is smarter currently. This might be a situation where they actually took that into account when they were designing her ability board, and that's why it is the way it is. Looking at all her abilities here, there is nothing extremely special in her abilities. What we really wanted to talk about was Kuraga and Full Life. Those are the two obviously most important things. In terms of her passives though, what's gonna be absolutely critical is Emerald Echo here from Green Mage. And the reason that's gonna be important is because remember, her TMR for one turn buffs attack, it buffs magic 70%, and it gives a 25% wind killer. So with Emerald Echo, she's gonna be able to buff 70% of her magic and attack for two turns and that's significant that can be plus 70% magic towards her cures That can be plus 70% attack towards uh, Resist blade or whatever she wants. Uh, does she even have resistance? No, she doesn't <laughs> It can go towards her physical attacking it can really go to whatever but I think how it's gonna work is instead of having Ayaka sort of you know, instant heal limit break. We're gonna see the Emerald Echo popped or where it'll be on her with her LB or, oh my God, I can't talk today. Uh, with her equipment ability and it's gonna last for two turns and she might use one turn to Kiraga with plus 70% magic, even though she doesn't have the highest magic out of a lot of magic units, or maybe you have more defensive spells put on her or defensive espers or cards. She's still gonna have high enough magic to substantially cure your allies or limit break damage whoever gets near you. So overall, I think the most important ability in her kit, once you have her MLB, is going to be her Emerald Echo. And I can actually see it being a real pain in the ass. And initially, when we didn't even know what her limit break ability, or oh my god, I can't talk, uh, when we didn't know what her TMR ability was gonna be, um, I didn't think Emerald Echo would be viable, but this is extremely viable, and I think it's going to be one of the only ways to build her. Again, here's her TMR, and you can see the percentages here of 70%, 70%, and 25%. You will have to max out Glacial Mastery for her ability, though. It also gives a nice Spirit 10, Defense 5, HP 322, Critical Avoid 6. It's actually very generous on the HP side. You can also see probably this image down here, which is from when I was just experimenting with builds with her. I've had people telling me Freyavi with 5,000 HP is the way to go. And maybe it is. I think probably you're gonna want to lean heavily on this TMR and lean on heavy armor more than you are leaning on boosting HP. So just as a reminder, she can equip armor, helm, and accessories. So there's a lot of weapons to discuss with her. And I think for her armor, no matter what, you're going to want to put golden armor plus five or iron plate plus five. Remember, her goal is to survive and live. And she is going to get defense 18 here. So that's pretty good. Ice brand plus five. Now, there's a huge debate right now. And I would say huge just because people don't have her level 99 currently. A huge debate on which weapon to use for her. And a lot of people are saying to use Vermilion Sword here. And I actually think that's wrong because you are gonna need her TMR to be viable. Yes, the Vermilion Sword might be one of the best to use with her if you're doing something like, I don't know, um, like a non, like maybe you only got her to level 89. 
I've seen people use Metal Slayer because of the Magic 90. I think that's good in a pinch. Honestly, though, you're going to have to go with Nagarok, Sleep Blade, or Ice Brand. Personally, I think the Ice Brand plus 5 is probably better because it has that Ice Attack plus 30 on it. And you can see it does have Magic 65. I would recommend the Critical version. In my previous video, I recommended the Vital version. But I would actually recommend the Critical. Uh, someone pointed out in the comment section that the Critical has the same Magic stat as the Vital. So I would go for Ice Brand plus 5. The question you really want to ask, though, is, is the difference of 60 magic going to make up in terms of damage, right? So you're basically saying you're going to take Ice Brand plus 5 because it's going to have a 30% modifier to all of her attacks, essentially. Or are you going to take Nagarok or Sleep Blade because it has plus 60 magic? So you're really going to have to debate here. This will affect her cures as well because cures aren't ice modified. So it's really up for debate on whether you want her to be a little bit more offense with the ice brand. Keep in mind the ice brand would affect her limit break as well. Or if you want her to be more magic based and focus on those cures. Honestly, I think if you're using the buff with Emerald Echo, you're going to see enough HP or enough magic on her to be able to get really high Kiragas, and I think that's what you're really going to want. So I would go for Ice Brand. Let's go over the pros and cons and uh, talk about what you might experience and why you would want her. Obviously, the first pro is going to be Kiraga in full life. She has very high HP. She has very easily to manipulate ability board. She has a strong TMR for herself. She has a strong offensive LB. And she has access to Green Mage Sub to give her strong TMR ability and extra turn duration. Some cons. Low movement. Lower than normal magic. Requires setup. So that would mean like uh, you're going to need to make sure to cast her TMR ability on her before she's able to cure or attack. And then you're only good for two turns. So you need to make sure she has her setup ready to go before she's fully engaging the enemy. Uh, she's very niche, right? She does fulfill a healing role, but she kind of fills that role that Miranda and Ayaka, she's kind of an in-between in there. And she kind of does some things better than Ayaka, but Miranda still does some things better than her. So it's kind of a weird place. You're really gonna have to work with her and fine tune her for your team. I think her skill cap is very high. And if you're not an advanced player, you definitely shouldn't be leveling her and using her right now. Uh, she has no healing limit burst. She is limited time. And her Spellblade sub currently is useless because you can't turn Taunting Spell off. And I just realized I didn't modify the little window down here. Um, <laughs> from my previous video. So if you do want to pull for Glaciella, I think she's a fantastic unit that fills a role very similar to Orlando as well. <laughs> you guys can't tell, I do reuse and copy my slides from previous videos, so I can keep a similar format. Well, thank you so much for watching everyone. I do appreciate it. I hope if you guys have any comments or questions, drop them down in the YouTube comments. Come hop in our Discord, dig.gs slash Discord. We do have a really cool, warm community, and we really are always looking for more people to join us. If not, if you can't do either of those, you can always come check me out on stream. I stream every day of the week, except for Mondays and Thursdays. So if you are looking for something to do tonight, feel free to hop by and come join our stream. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.